Hi there, and welcome to lesson number two in our computer literacy course. Now, so far, we've looked at what computers are. We've spoken a little bit about, you know, desktops, laptops, how computers work. We've spoken about this tower or system unit. We've spoken about, you know, Windows, the operating systems, things like that. But in today's video, what I'm going to look at is instead of going into, you know, a huge amount of technical detail inside our tower, I just want to focus on what the difference is between our tower or system unit, a smartphone and a laptop. The reason for this is simple. I want to make sure that you are equipped with the necessary skills and knowledge so that no matter where you go, if you see any one of these devices, you know, number one, what they are, you know how they function. And if you're looking to buy one, you know and have the skills and knowledge to know what to look for. So as we start looking at these three devices, they all have one thing in common. Remember, and maybe I should take you back first to the very, very first phones. I'm not even going to call them smartphones. Okay. I'm just going to call them phones. I'll probably have a picture up here of these phones, but your old phones could send messages. You could phone with them. And at a certain point in time, you could even play a game called snake on them. I remember that with the Nokia 5110. Um, so they had minimal features, but it allowed you for the first time to be able to phone someone in a mobile way. In other words, no cables. Okay. Now that we've moved on to what we know as smartphones, well, what actually makes this device smart? Why do we call it a smartphone? Well, it's simple. These phones have now taken different technologies. I mean, think of what this phone can do. I can take a video with it. I can take pictures with it. I can record my voice. I can send text messages. I can send video messages. Okay. I can do video calls. I can do all of those things. And because this device has all those different aspects and technologies built into it, this has now become our smart device. Okay. And this is why we call it a smartphone because one device can do so many different things. I mean, I can check my email. Okay. I can respond to emails go onto the internet, go onto Facebook, all these lovely things from one device. Now, why am I comparing these three? Well, it's simple. I need you to understand how they work. This is what we call a motherboard. And here you can see, I'm just going to hold this up a little closer to the screen so you can see there and you can see exactly what the motherboard looks like. So this motherboard, this is the main circuit board of all three of these devices. Now, this one would typically fit into your desktop computer or your tower over here. You have a different one, um, but the same sort of layout inside or at the back of your laptops. So there's still a motherboard inside here. And then even in your smartphone, you still have a motherboard. It's simply, and I want you to understand this, the main circuit board of these devices. So when we look at a motherboard, you'll see that there's different slots for various things over here. And I'm in further videos, you know, I'm, I'm going to be talking a bit about that. I'm not going to go into the, all the details now, but just understand this is the main board. So if anything goes wrong with this main board, it affects everything else that's connected to it. Okay. So point number one, all of these devices have these main circuit boards called motherboards. Then into the motherboard is this very important piece of hardware. You can see it over there. This is known as RAM, random access memory. So if we look at our motherboard over here, we can see that our RAM actually physically slots in to the motherboard. But what does this device do? Well, when you open applications on your phone, and I'm just going to use your phone as an example. When you press and open, you know, Facebook and you go to WhatsApp and all this, the instructions that um, allow these programs to open, it's stored in memory. So the more of this you have, the faster it is to actually open applications and get them running. Okay. So this is why when you look at a desktop, when you look at your laptop, when you look at your smartphone and they tell you it's got four gigs of RAM. That's the amount of space it has to hold those instructions. And I know many of you uh, might have come across, you know, when you have issues with your computer and sometimes people will tell you, well, have you switched it off and switched it back on? 
Why would they say that? Well, it's because those instructions remain in here until the device is switched off. When I switch my PC off, everything in here gets wiped clean and we start the process again. Okay, so again, all of these have a motherboard. All of these have a stick of RAM. And this is very important. The more RAM you have, the faster your PC will operate, the faster programs will load, and the easier and faster you can move between applications on your phone, on your laptop, and on your desktop. It is one of the easiest and simplest ways to upgrade your um, laptop and desktop. Unfortunately, when it comes to your smartphones, there's no upgrading of the RAM. You can see how small a smartphone is. So everything is built in here. So this is why it's important when you go and buy a phone that you, you know, check how much RAM the phone comes with. Okay, because you can't upgrade on your laptop and your desktop. If you have four gigs, in fact, the entry level should be around eight gigs of RAM. That's what you should look for. That's, that's my tip. Um, but it can be upgraded. So when it comes to a laptop, always ask, can the RAM be upgraded? And whoever's selling it to you will let you know. Desktop, same thing. Can I add more RAM? Yes, you can. Um, how much can I upgrade it to? So that you know what you can do for the future as well. But remember, RAM holds a, a temporary place to hold all the instructions needed to open our applications and move between our applications on our computer. The next item, very important item that plugs into our motherboard is this. This is known as our hard drive. And I'm just going to show you uh, what the hard drive looks like over there. Yeah, you can see the circuits underneath. You can see the circular pattern over here. There's actually a reason for that. There you can see even the details of the particular hard drive. So this is where everything is stored on a computer, laptop, and even your smartphone, okay? All of them have hard drives. So what does this device do? Like I said to you, it stores your files, your images, your folders, your shortcuts, your everything that you store on your phone, your messages, all of those things get stored here. Now, you can imagine if you've got a room full of clothing, can you move around? You know, inside of it easily? Probably not. So what do you have to do? You've got to clean out some stuff. What do you regularly do at home? You throw out the things you're not using and you keep that which you are. It's no different on a hard drive. If, and I'm going to use your phone as an example, when your phone is full or nearing, you know, its full capacity, what will happen is you'll get a notification saying, listen, um, your phone is almost full. But what you'll begin to experience is the phone begins to slow down. Okay. When you want to open applications, it becomes slower. When you want to do certain things, sometimes, you know, some programs or applications won't even load. Um, it can affect the whole operating, um, you know, structure of this device. And in fact, for your desktop and laptop as well. So here's another tip. Remember now, our hard drive does what? It stores all of our files, desktop, laptop, and smartphone. When you go and buy these things, you want to ask them two questions. What is the size of the hard drive in the machine? In the desktop, how big is it? Is it a 500 gig? Is it one terabyte, right? I'm, I'm gonna explain those terms, but just for now, I know what to ask. The laptop, exactly the same thing. Your phone, please remember, it is not upgradable in terms of the, the hard drive size in here. Usually what you'll hear is they'll tell you this phone has 16 gigs of storage space. Now, please remember the amount of storage space needed on a phone and your computers is obviously going to be a lot different. So typically, phones come in at around about 16 gigs. Depending on the phone, some phones allow you to upgrade that with like a little memory card that you can slot in and get more space or have more space. Some phones don't allow that. And I think Apple doesn't allow that. So when you buy in a phone, consider the RAM, consider how much space is on the phone by default. In other words, the phone comes with that amount of space. So I think this one comes with about 128 gigs of space. So that's how much I've got there. So please remember that. With your desktop and your laptop, sorry, desktop and laptop, I'm busy looking at the, at the camera here, um, they can be upgraded. 
in a desktop, for example, you can have multiple hard drives. In a laptop, um, you can generally have one, sometimes you have two as well. And again, you can fiddle with the size, you can change you know, one for a different um, size. So if you've got a 500 gig, you can change it to a bigger one and things like that. That's what you can do here, but you cannot do it with your smartphone. So in summary, we've looked at the basic components that we find in all three of these. And we've also looked at just the surface level differences between these devices. Remember, all of them have our main circuit board, which is known as our motherboard. All of them also have RAM, our memory, and it has a hard drive where we store all of our information. And then remember, it's important to remember that with our desktop or our system unit, we can upgrade the motherboard, we can upgrade the hard drive, we can upgrade the memory. But when you are buying these, you want to ask two big questions. What is the size of the hard drive? And what is the amount of RAM that's in this unit? When it comes to your laptop, you're going to ask exactly the same thing. Now, it's more important on your laptop to ask that question than even the desktop. Why? Because with your desktop, you can swap components out easily, right? With your laptop, it becomes a little bit more tricky. So in your desktop, remember, I can have multiple hard drives. Um, I've got a number of slots to put in memory, but it's more limited in my laptop because it's a compact device, portable device. You need to ask the question, how much memory does the laptop come with? And then secondly, can it be upgraded? That's a very important question to ask. Then you need to ask them, well, what's the size of the hard drive in here? Now, it all depends again on your needs, but at the end of the day, um, whatever that size is, you need to ask them, can you add a second hard drive to the laptop or will the hard drive need to be replaced if you need a bigger one? Most people will just you know, buy the laptop and they'll get an external hard drive. Again, things I'll share with you later on that fits you know, outside of this unit and just plugs in via uh, one of our USB ports over there. Okay, then remember, when it comes to your smartphone, your smartphone's also got a motherboard, it's got RAM, it's got a hard drive. The questions you want to ask is, well, how much RAM does it have? You know, how quickly is it going to move between applications? Also, um, the amount of hard drive space. Is it 16 gigs? Is it 32? You know, is it 128? And with all of these, all three of them, desktop, laptop, and smartphone, Folks, it's going to depend on what you want to do with it. And you'll see in subsequent videos, we'll begin to talk about things different people do with these machines. So I hope this video has helped you, you know, just understand the difference between these three and what we need to look at when we buy them.